So let's try some uh, doing some uh, cl uh, exercises about the functions. Um, so first, let's say we have a function that we defined want to calculate the absolute values of any given variable. OK, so that's that is how the function looks like this. So calculate absolute values and also we will receive one argument from the uh, user and so if a is greater than zero it will return a if a is less than zero it will return negative a okay so are there any problems with this function all right so let's see how that worked uh, in python okay so let's say we define calculate absolute a and let's comment out this print so if a is greater than zero we will return a okay if a is smaller than zero we will return minus a okay and let's try to see print calculate let's see nine okay we have nine so if we calculate negative nine and we still have nine okay so that simply works so and so what if we provide zero okay let's see what will happen so if we see calculate absolute value of zero we know the result should be zero it, re it written now okay it written now so that is a problem so and also you know what if the user typed a string instead of a number Oop. you can see here it will return this uh, error seeing that so the greater than is not supported uh, for string okay uh, so those are the two scenarios that uh, we didn't um, um, design we didn't design in our uh, function to handle those two errors okay so now we know okay so those are the two possible um, errors so how can we handle that well you, you can definitely use try uh, except to do that however so if you can handle those errors more specifically so the function will be more robust okay so first let's see let's handle the um, the type error so I will we will check if the type of this input okay is string we will return okay so wrong data type let's put that one in into a parenthesis wrong date type and next let's see l if a is greater than zero and also great or equal to zero we will return a otherwise we will return negative a Okay, so that is our solution to handle those two errors. So let's try it now. So let's say, let's first calculate zero. Okay, it returns zero, great. So now let's see, we try to calculate a string. Run date type, let's try use a different string and a run date type. Okay, nice. So that is how we uh, our first exercise so when we design some uh, functions um, we may see some errors so that is how we can handle those errors so again this function is still not 100 percent robust so it may still create some errors but just as an exercise uh, show you i just want to show you the process of how we can improve our our functions that we designed okay so let's look at our second exercise 
so we want to define two functions, one to calculate the sigma and one to calculate the pi. OK, so remember that in one of in, in our previous labs, we calculated one plus two plus three until five and also one times two times three until five. OK, so now we want to design um, genetic functions that can calculate uh, sigma and also pi for any uh, given numbers. OK, uh, so you can pause your video here and also you can think about that, how we can do that um, by using functions. So this will be a little bit advanced. OK, so think about how we can do that uh, by using functions. OK, uh, so here I'm going to provide my solution. So first, let's uh, define calculate sigma. So here we want to calculate sigma that from n to m. So we have two uh, arguments, m and also n. OK, so uh, sigma means that n plus, uh, n plus 1 and also two, 1 plus 2 plus 3 until we go to m. Uh, so here, uh, still we will use a local variable, I call it result, equals 0, so result will contain the temporary result. And here I'm going to use a for loop, so I will say for i in range. So now we want to start from n until, we want a number from n until m, so that in this range function we should use m plus 1 in this range function. OK, uh, you may want to pause the video here and also think about why do we want until m, m plus 1, not m. OK, that is because for range functions, if you want to reach m, you have to read if you have defined m plus 1. OK, and within this for loop, we see result equals result plus i. OK, and finally, we can return this result. OK, so this is our uh, function for calculating the sigma. So let's try it. Print calculate sigma. So m is a big number. So let's say 5 and 3. So 3 plus 4 plus 5. And <clears throat> Let's see, for i in range n to m, result, OK, uh, I have a typo here. OK, so now we are good. OK, um, so you can see 3 plus 4 plus 5, and the result is 12. OK, that's great. And we can also define the calculated pi in the same way. So let's say copy this one. OK, and here we see we want to calculate the pi. And for to calculate the pi, the initial result will be 1 because we want to use a multiple. OK, so result equals result times i. And this will still give us a number from n to m. OK, so let's try it print calculate pi and we want to start we want to start from 3 until 5 okay so let's run it and you can see the result is 60 and that is also correct okay uh, so you may want to spend more time and also look at those two functions and also you may also want to check our previous labs that how we did that one in a while loop and also now we convert that one into two functions.